So good evening. We're going to focus today on probability, thinking about probability, uh, teaching probability to high, high attainers. Uh, and as always, this is what I want to try and do. I, I want to I want to show, show some things which which I hope are new to you, that are therefore intriguing and inspiring. But certainly, maybe 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 there's some familiar things looked at in a different light. Um, and I hope that's interesting, and I hope some of that you can share with your students. I've had a little bit of feedback. A couple of people have emailed me to say they've tried some ideas with their year 11s, and it's and it's uh, and it's gone well. <laughs> maybe more of you have tried ideas you, you, with your year 11 and they haven't gone well, and you haven't told me that. Well, I'll, I'll just I'll just live in blissful ignorance then. Um, so, but if you have tried some ideas, then do do share it and either either directly with me or put it in the chat could be really useful to know if, how this is how these ideas are, are landing in the classroom whether, whether they make, make whether they make a successful translation from from, you know, from here to to the classroom um as always lots of ideas i've taken from from, from other people um so i hope uh, i hope they all feel credited um where, where, where wherever they are uh why why probability well it's a slightly odd topic, you might think, because actually, probably all, all they have to do with probability in, in Key Stage Four uh, is, is you know, kind of tree diagrams and calculation questions, you know, sort of sample space diagrams, outcome space diagrams, those sorts of things. It, where, where's it's actually relatively straightforward. It's quite, it's quite a banker when it comes to exam marks. So, so why have I chosen it? Well, uh, because I think there are, I think it's there are lots of things what we can do with, with probability questions, which really test their understanding of probability. I mean, so representing and calculating that's essentially around fluency. But actually, as I've got some suggestions to make to you, which which I think you will you will see will have an, will enable you to assess and and test and probably find lacking their understanding of probability. And then towards the end. I've got some questions which, which are not numerical at all, which, which are not calculation questions at all, but will actually really will reveal to you what, what they do or probably more likely what they don't understand about probability, what, what their mental met model of probability is, what their, as I say, what their conceptual understanding of probability is. I shared this slide with you before, you know, all the time I'm trying to develop knowledge and fluency and understanding. And when I was thinking about what topics to do in, the, in these sessions, I thought probability was, was a really good one to choose, for particularly this thing about conceptual understanding. You know, I've taught plenty of students at, in Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5 who you know, got the answers right, who you know, can do the calculations, but really do not know what is going on. And, and I hope some of the questions, some of the ideas I'm going to share with you this evening will enable you to tease out from your students whether they do or they don't, and then, and then what to do about it if that's the case. Yeah, you know, lots of lots of students I've taught know that, know how, you know, certainly know how to work out complicated tree diagram questions. They remember what to do with at least one situations, but they really do not understand what it is they are working out. And towards the end, the last quarter hour or so, um, I've got some questions which really, really which I think will, will really successfully probe the, the extent and, and the limits of their, their understanding of, of this idea of probability. I also think it's a really good context for some of these prompts that I've shared with you before. You know, what's, there, what's different, but also the you know, you give me another another diagram. You know, what the person is going to look at is representing probabilities in numbers of different ways. Um, and of course, make up your own, ask each other's. Then the, that's a very natural thing to do in 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 a, in a probability situation because they can just think of a different context to 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 to, to make say a tree diagram question. So I think of, of the topics, though on the surface, it's, it's, it's in exams, it's pretty predictable, it's pretty straightforward what happens in exams. I think actually it's worth spending longer on it than, than in a sense it might merit from a, a Mark's point of view, because I think there's lots you can get out of it. So let's, let's kind of begin with the classic. So this is my classic um, tree diagram question. Uh, obviously it doesn't say that, we hope your students would realise that. Um, and looking at it, they've got to think, well, essentially, just sort of draw it from beginning to end. So, so first of all, I have cereals and porridge, and they add up to one, so there's, there's no alternatives. You know, 40% of the time I have cereals, 60% of the time I have porridge. You know, that's what's happened in the past. That's, that's what's happened in my experience. You know, where do these numbers come from? They come from me looking back in my diary and going, oh, I had cereal spread, oh, I had cereal spread, oh, I had porridge spread on that day. And then realizing over time that on about 40% of days, I had cereal breakfast, and about 60% of days, I had, uh, I had porridge breakfast. These numbers are not plucked out of the air. They come from my knowledge about myself, my habits and my memory, or, or more likely, given as I head towards my 50s, my failing memory, uh, more likely my diary recording slightly weirdly what I have for breakfast each day. And then similarly, the, the, the drink, the beverage choices to accompany um, these foodstuffs. So tea uh, is probability 0 0.6 and orange juice probability 0 0.4 and then uh, 
And if I'm having hot porridge, I'm probably not going to have hot tea as well. So that's going to be 0.8. And that's going to be sorry, 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 for the orange juice, the cooling, soothing orange juice. So that's the classic tree diagram. Why, why are there only two branches? Well, because the problem is added up to one, though there's no space for any other possibilities. It's either cereals or it's porridge. I really am quite predictable. And then that, there's your kind of classic question. What's the probability that, 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 that I drink tea? So, uh, you know, obviously we're going to think about the different branches that, com that combine to, that, that result in my swigging a cup of tea. So the probability that I drink tea is going to be uh, 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.2, which gives me 0 0.36. Thank you, thank you, Amy. Remember that number, we're gonna need it later. We're gonna need 0.36 later, and then come back to that. Um, now, one question is, well, well, well why, why do we multiply along the branches and why do we add up the different branches? And I think that's actually quite a hard question to answer. That's why, you may recall last week, if you, if you were able to join us last week, that's why I said last week, do the stuff on ratios that we did last week first. Because if you've got actual, you know, actual bags of apples and some of them are red, some of them are green, and, and of the red ones, some are sweet and sour, uh, sweet or sour, and of the green ones, some are sweet and some are sour, then it makes much more sense that you're taking, say, in this case, 60% of the red apples are sweet and the red apples are 40% of all the apples. You really can imagine having all the apples and then 40% of them are red, and then of the red ones, 60% of them are sweet. You can, so these probabilities, these, these, these fractions, these decimals in this case, sorry, these, these, these portions represent actual processes of choosing, processes of selection, and of, 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 of extracting subgroups, subsets even, uh, of the apples. That first of all, the red ones, and then from the red ones, extracting the sweet ones. And therefore, it makes sense that, well, to end up with sweet ones, it could be either red and sweet or green and sweet. And so that's why I've got two different branches. And then one of multiple number branches because I'm choosing 6% of a group, and that group is 40% of a larger group. So it's 6% of 40%. Um, in this context, that's much harder because, because what's here at the beginning? That what, 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 are we, what are we choosing from at the beginning? And that's why I mentioned you know, slightly flippantly, but not entirely flippantly, the beginning the idea of my diary. You know, where do these numbers come from? They, they come from experience. They come from my memory, my knowledge of myself, my knowledge of my preferences. I mean, you, you don't know what I have for breakfast, but I do. And I know that over time on about, in, in about every 10 days, every, 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 every two working weeks, I do something different the weekend. I have Smoked salmon and bagels at the weekend. <laughs> I wish. Um, uh, I was going to say actually, if I went to, if I went to Tiffany's for breakfast, I would not have cereals and porridge. I'd have, to have something much grander than cereals and porridge if actually I was in Tiffany's having breakfast. But anyway, um, so so where do these numbers come from? They come from my memory, from my experience, from looking back over time and going, well, I noticed that in every kind of working week, working fortnight every 10 days. I, I usually have porridge about four out of the 10 days, so six of the 10 days for porridge, and I usually have a cereal about four of the 10 days. And I think it's really worth talking that through with the students so they understand there is implicitly, there is a, 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 a group of objects of concrete experiences, you know, real life objects, in this case, pages in my diary or memories in my cerebral cortex, uh, which I'm looking back at and I'm choosing, I'm selecting from within those. And that's the trans. That's how you get the translation from from the from the concrete objects with the ratios, which we talked about last time, or, or, or the proportion tree diagrams from last time, to the probability tree diagrams this time. Um, and I think that's really worth them understanding at quite an early stage that, that there is a sort of selection process happening here. But what you're selecting from is something intangible from from my memory, from my experience, not tangible from a, a, a bucket of apples. Okay, so that's that calculation. So what, what can we do with it? Well, we could do the same sort of things we did last week. So we could basically just change the knowns and the unknowns. So now if you look at this question, I haven't told you uh, the probability of cereals, the probability of porridge. I've not told you what my experience suggests. So I draw the same tree diagram, but this time I, I don't have a, a value to put on the first branches, but afterwards I do. Everything else stays the same. Um, so that's my T and that's my orange, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, and that's my T and that's my orange. And now I know that the probability T is two thirds. So I know that those two together have to make two thirds. So what am I going to do? Well, I need, I need a letter to represent an unknown. And as we talked about last time, 
it's worth getting the students to think about what are the possibilities. Well, I could have I could have X and Y, uh, I could have X and Y, um, uh, I could have I could have sort of A over B and and and, and C over D as a sort of fraction. Um, what you want to say is actually what you really want is basically X or, or let's go for P for probability, and then down here you want the other one to be one subtract P. So you want them to realize that if there are only two options, then a sensible model for that is P and one subtract P. And so we put those together and that tells us that 0.6 P plus 0.2 one subtract P has to make two thirds, it's up to two thirds. Um, and so that's going to give me 0.4 P uh, is equal to two thirds subtract one fifth, that's 0.2. Uh, so that's going to be uh, 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 10 fifteenths um, subtract uh, 3 fifteenths. So uh, that's going to give me uh, 7 fifteenths. Yeah, so, so two, two, two fifths of P is 7 fifteenths. And so P must be 7 over uh, seven over 6. Uh, <sighs> That's yes. That's that, okay. <laughs> I didn't work this. I didn't work, work this question through yesterday. I wish I had done now. It can't be two thirds because, of course, the, uh, it, because of that probability is point six. Oh, that's really embarrassing. Okay, right. Um, so I remember I paid to have p being seven sixths contradiction, and I'm recording this. Right. How embarrassing. Uh, so that was silly of me. That can't be two thirds because that's larger. <laughs> it can't be two thirds. That's larger than the point six. Um, so. Uh, I'm now recorded for posterity as making a really quite classic error in my question design. Right, so choose a number there less than 0.6 and, and, and track it through. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, so, so what you can do to make the questions richer, you, you, you can change the values that you give them. And also you can consider some impossible values and get the students to consider why they are impossible. In the maximum this could be is in P is 1, and then that would be 1 times 0 0.6. It can never get to 2 thirds. I really should have spotted that, sorry. Um, so. Here, I think, is another question we can ask ourselves, though. So the tree diagram looks the same. So we've kind of gone back to the tree diagram. Um, uh, let's just keep the order the same. Cereals and porridge. Um, so 0 0.4, 0 0.6. And just whilst I'm drawing this, you can be thinking, what's the same, what's different? So now there's my 0 0.6, there's my 0 0.4, there's my 0 0.2, 0 0.8. Now, so what are we told here? Now, you've, now we've got some information. Now we're told that we're drinking a cup of tea. Orange juice is no longer in the picture. So actually, we, we, we haven't got this tree diagram. We haven't, those two branches are not an option. They've, they, they, they've been snipped off. Uh, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Jenny. That's very, very kind of you. I probably should check this in advance, though. <laughs> But yes, you're, you're right. You know, just blindly following it through and getting P equals 7, 6, they all know there's a problem with that. And there's a nice discussion we had about what's the maximum, but I probably should have checked that in advance. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, so in this situation, um, you know, we are drinking a cup of tea. So, so we haven't got those branches of the orange juice that we ha that they no longer exist. We're only in the situation of those two. Now, what we know is we know that those two add up to 0 0.36. We had that earlier. But within those possibilities, then what I want is the porridge one. So what I want actually, therefore, is that situation. So you can, you can imagine by saying 36% of the time I'm drinking tea, and of that 36% of the time, 12% of, of, of those times, I'm drinking, uh, I'm having porridge as well. So 36% of the, of the days, across 100 days, on about 36 of them, I'm, I'm, I'm having a cup of tea. And of those 36 days, on 12 of those days, about, I'm, I'm having a bowl of porridge to go with my tea. And so the probability is going to be, probability is going to be 0 0.12 out of 0 0.36, which therefore equals a third. And getting them to realize why that's the right answer and to explain that answer, perhaps in the sort of language I've just been using just then, this is telling us the number of the, 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 the proportion of days, you know, the, 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 the frequency of days, I have both. And this is telling me the, the frequency of days, I, sorry, the first one telling me the frequency of days I have T, and the second one telling me the frequency of days I have both. And therefore, you know you are, all, you are on one of the T days, because we're told that, and therefore we want the 12 out of the 36, i.e. the one third. 
If you teach key stage five, or if you remember this from your own sort of education, you'll recognize that this is a conditional probability. Uh, oh, sorry, Helen. Um, I probably having t is not. 0.3, I think I did say 0.36. Uh, sorry, Helen, I, th I think we're... Don't worry, Helen. Um, I, I, I notice I changed, I, I, I changed the question, I changed the number. So, so the, so the 0.36 um, uh, isn't relevant for the two thirds because 0.36 came from having the values for C and P at the beginning. Don't, um, let, I'll, I'll go back to this question. Okay, so this, this is the same as the first question. I've got all the same numbers, so the 0.36 is, is definitely correct here. I'm, I'm happy with that. So what, what I was saying, sorry folks, um, is that what we've got here is a conditional probability. Now, I'm not suggesting you teach them about conditional probability, but it's worth just being aware of that. And you might want to use the language that you might want to tell them that what we're saying here is what's the problem of having porridge. Now, I wouldn't use the notation, I, but I would use the language given that I am drinking tea or given the information that, given the knowledge that I'm drinking tea. And so that's the key phrase you might want to use with them, given the information, given the knowledge, given the fact that I am drinking tea. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna to come to two other tables in a moment, uh, but deliberately I want to do from tree diagrams first, uh, because I think it is quite, uh, it's, as you see in the chat folks, uh, one of my colleagues said that uh, students find this idea confusing. I agree. That's why I think it's worth doing the tree diagram to confront that cognitive challenge, to confront that difficulty. Um, Thinking about the tree diagram, thinking about a tree diagram, I said at the beginning, we kind of go from the beginning to end. So we, we start with the cereals and the porridge, and then we, did, then we go with the tea and the orange juice. Why, why not the other way around? There's no reason to have the other way around. I mean, the implication perhaps is that I, I choose my, my food stuff and then I choose my beverage. But it doesn't have to be that. You know, I could go the other way around the cafeteria and choose my beverage first and then choose my food stuff. So what does the tree diagram look like? that way round, say. So rather than choosing first the meal and work out the probabilities relative to the meal, uh, let's do the other way around. Let's choose the beverage first, the drink first, and then work out the probabilities relative to the beverage or conditional on the beverage. Right, so what, 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 what have we got? Do, do, do any of these numbers fit on here? Well, remember, we know the probability of T is, we, we, we worked that out earlier, so the probability of getting a T is 0.36. And the probability therefore getting orange juice must be 0 0.64. So we know the probability of drinking T is 0 0.36, and therefore we can put that on. Now, what do we know about the probability of having cereals? Well, it's 0 0.4. So where is the 0 0.4? The 0 0.4 is that and that together make 0 0.4 and where so the 0 0.4 for cereals is those two options together so whether I have two orange juice put them together cereals is 0 0.4 um, whereas the probability for porridge is that so those two together have to make 0 0.6 so what we're trying to do is do, is do the um, is do the tree diagram in a sense backwards, uh, but only backwards because we chose, chose, chose to do the other way around uh, what, what we might call the forwards uh, earlier. Okay, so what what else do we know? So thinking about the the the, num the numbers that we have got. Uh, so how can we then fill in the missing numbers here? Or what else? What else do we know? Well, in the previous slide, we worked out that when you're drinking tea, the probability that you've got porridge is a third. So when you're drinking tea, the probability that you're, drinking, that you're eating porridge is a third. So that must be a third. And therefore, that must be two thirds. So you're absolutely right, Amy, we can do this by, by some, some of these equations, but what actually what, what we can do, all, all the numbers we need are contained on the previous tree diagram. They're just a bit, they're just a bit hidden. They're just not obvious. So we worked out here that 
knowing that you're drinking tea, so given that you're drinking tea, you're probably eating porridge is a third, and therefore that must be there because that's what that branch represents. That branch represents the probability of eating porridge given that you're, you're already on the tea pathway. You've got your cup of tea, and now you, you must probably then go and get a bowl of porridge. That's a third. Um, and that's why I think this is a really good activity because this is really testing, do they understand what the tree diagram is telling them? Do they understand what the tree diagram means? So do they understand that this third means that you know you've got tea and then you're going on to get porridge, which is precisely what we did earlier when we took the, the, the tea ending branch out of the two, uh, out of the two, uh, sorry, so the porridge including branch out of the two tea ending branches. And similarly, what about here for what about here for or, porridge and orange juice? Well, let's kind of go back to the beginning. Um, what do we know about orange juice? Well, if T is 0.36, then the orange juice, the probability of orange juice must be 0.16 and 0.48, which is 0.64, obviously. And then having porridge with that is, is the lower branch, is the 0 0.6 times 0 0.4, 0 0.8, which is the 0.48 out of the 0.64. So this number here, this number, this number here is the probability of eating porridge given that, if you use the note, just use the notation for, for concision, the vertical line is a way of saying given that. So given that I'm drinking orange juice, well, that's being on this branch, the 0.48, the 0.48 um, uh, pathway out of the total 0.64 pathway, and that's three quarters. 0.48 out of 0.64 is three quarters. So that must be three quarters, and therefore that must be one quarter. So it's, it's three quarters because it's 0.48 out of 0.64. And if you look back at the first tree diagram, see why that's the case. So yes, we can aim to do it algebraically, but actually I'd much rather do it numerically by getting to think, what, what, what does it mean to be on this branch? It means I know I'm drinking orange juice and I'm having a bowl of cereals. So of the two orange juice pathways, of the two orange juice pathways, I'm, I'm thinking about the top one, the one which includes cereals. So that's the 0.16 out of 0.64, and therefore that's why I get a quarter there. So that I think is a really good activity. I don't think it's easy, uh, I think, but I think it's a really good activity to take, take a tree diagram and, and essentially reverse it. So go, go think, think of it one way around and then do it the other way around and translate all the probabilities. Of course, you ought to check, you ought to check to get the same answer. So for example, what's the probability then I have porridge? So it's 0.36 times a third, that's 0.12 and it's 0.64 times three quarters, which is 0.48, and 0.12 plus 0.48 does indeed make 0.6. Phew, so we can check that. And then similarly, 0.36 times two thirds is 0.24, and 0.64 uh, times one quarter is a 0.16, so two four and one six does indeed make 0.4, so we do get the right answers. What would make this easier is an alternative representation, um, and I've, 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 made this, I've made this harder by not doing the alternative representation first, so, so you need to choose the sequencing. Actually, what this, what this really says to me is uh, what, what, what are called two-way tables, some is called Carroll diagrams, as in Lewis Carroll. Essentially, they're Venn diagrams, but they're just, they're, they're just drawn with squares like this rather than circles. So it, I've got porridge, I've got cereals, I've got tea, I've got orange juice. Now, what do I know? So cereals is probability 0.4, so cereals is probability 0.4 um, and uh, porridge is probability 0.6 so porridge is probably 0.6 and uh, what else do I know so with cereals I sorry to make that, make that four a bit more obvious uh, now, what else do I know? Well, what, what, what did we work out earlier? Well, for example, we worked out earlier that probably getting T altogether was 0.36. So we know from earlier work that probably getting T altogether is 0.36 and therefore orange juice altogether is 0.64. Uh, and what else do we work out? We worked out that things like having, um, if we sort of go back to the tree diagram, having uh, porridge and T is 0.12. So I can put that in there. So porridge and tea is 0 0.12, cereals and tea is 0 0.24, and it must be that because I've got to add it to 0 0.36, but also if we go back to the tree diagram, if we go back to the tree diagram, and then cereals and tea is 0 0.4 times 0 0.6, which is 0 0.24. 
Uh, and then if it's 0.12, then that must be 0.48. That must be 0.48 because we're going to add it to make 0.6. And then, well, that must be 0.16, either to make 0.4 vertically or to make 0.64 horizontally. And, and few, it works. So they can fill in those those um uh, th 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 those those quadrants, orange and tea, cereals and tea, porridge and orange juice, cereals and orange juice, fit those all together. And then the question about, for example, I am drinking tea. What's the probability that I'm eating porridge? Is probably slightly easier to see because I am drinking tea. So I am in the tea row. I am drinking tea. So I'm in the tea row. I want. The situation where I'm also eating porridge, so it's the 0.12 out of 0.36, then so my 0.12 out of 0.36, which is the calculation we had earlier. So I think for these conditional probabilities, and, and I, I see no reason not to use that language, I don't think you should kind of embark on the, on the notation or embark on the formula or anything like that. I think you want to, be able to look at it in terms of, of say, a Venn diagram uh, or a two-way table like this and go, well, look, I tell you I'm drinking tea. That means you're in the tea row. If you're in the tea row, what's the probability you're also eat, drinking porridge, sorry, eating porridge, well, it's 0.12 out of the tea row, so it's 0.12 out of 0.36, which gives us the third. And similarly, um, uh, what's the probability, say, that um, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm having a glass of orange juice, what's the probability that I'm also having some cereals? Well, I'm ha I am definitely having a glass of orange juice, so I'm in that row. And I want the probability that I'm also having some cereals. Well, that's going to be being in that situation, that square, 0.16, out of the 0.64, which is the quarter. So that's the probability. So that that let's so say that there is that probability there is probability of having cereals given the prior information, knowing already that. I am having a glass of orange juice. I've got the orange juice in my hand. I've, I've had a sip of it. I know it's orange juice. Now, what am I eating? Oh, I've got cereals, the probability a quarter of the time. So actually, I have to say, to translate from one, one vent tree diagram another, uh, to another tree diagram, going via the two-way table makes it easier. Um, and I, but what I would do is I'd do the translate, I try and do the translation directly as we've modeled today, and then introduce the idea of the two-way table and, and get them to see why the two-way table get, makes it easier. Because basically the, the, the numbers on one of the, one of the Venn diagrams are on this, are, 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 all the numbers are, on, are, in, are in the two-way table. They're just gonna read them correctly uh, out of the two-way table and apply them correctly to, to the tree diagrams. Um, and then, of course, you see, you can you can just, just change numbers completely. So you can then just give them something which looks like a, a two way table. So again, probability cereals, tea, orange juice. Right. So cereals and tea is 0 0.15. Uh, no, sorry, cereals and tea. Sorry. Cereals and tea is 0 0.15. Cereals and OJ is 0 0.25. Okay, so, and t is 0 0.2. So that's what we're given in the question. Right, can we work out the rest of it? Well, that's got to be 0 0.05. Um, that's got to be 0 0.4. So that's got to be 0 0.6. So that's got to be 0 0.55. And that adds up to 0 0.8. Phew, check. Okay. And then something like this, I am drinking a cup of tea. So I'm in the tea row. What's probably I'm eating porridge. So that's going to be 0 0.05 out of the tea row, 0 0.2. And then I am eating porridge. What's probably I'm drinking a cup of tea. So I'm in the, tea, I'm in the porridge column. So I want tea. So I want uh, 0 0.05 out of 0 0.6. Uh, and then you, you'll almost see, see what I'm going to ask now. Well, what's the same? What's different? Um, so Amy, when would I use a Venn diagram? Well, obviously what I could do is I could translate this into Venn diagram. This is a Venn diagram. This is, this is effectively a Venn diagram. Uh, it's just represented differently. So you, so you could think about turning, turning it into a Venn diagram. The problem with Venn diagrams is they, they obviously get, they get very they get um, uh, very complicated quite soon if you have too many variables. Um, so representing this as a Venn diagram is, is a good activity to represent represent or try to represent this as a Venn diagram. Um, but 
what I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Ben, I, I, I agree with you. It's, it, I think Venn diagrams just become much more opaque um, when, you, when you start having a, 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 a number of different variables on any of which you can, you can condition. Um, so slightly answer, Amy, is I don't use them very often. I, I use them quite reluctantly. Uh, I, think there are, I think other representations are more informative and, and are easier to manipulate. You know, I am drinking a cup of tea, I'm in that row. I am having, eating porridge, I'm in that column. Take, take it from there. Um, then, of course, what I'd say here now is, can you draw me a Venn diagram either way? So from so it's the same setup, as you can see, but the numbers are different. So what I say to them is, can you draw me a Venn diagram which starts porridge and cereals? And can you also draw me a Venn diagram which starts tea and orange juice? And you might want to use the two-way table in the middle as a way of translating from one to the other. Um, so something like this, looks superficially very similar. So let's draw it as a tree diagram. So let's start off with sort of helicopter and lifeboat. And then the question is, why is this not right? Well, because we don't know, uh, and actually we, 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 we look at the numbers, you can see it's not the case. I mean, our lifeboat is a half and helicopter is three fifths. Well, that's a bit problematic because that's more than one. So it can't be this, it can't be the case that we have either a helicopter or a lifeboat because that covers more than 100% of the, of the possibilities. So I put this in, this, is, this isn't a mistake with the fractions. <laughs> this is deliberately put in to make the children realize that this doesn't, this isn't possible. This, you know, this, this is a contradiction, they can't, you can't have this. But this, this, this tree diagram, or at least a tree diagram drawn in this way, doesn't, can't represent correctly the situation we've got. So what do we have to do? We have to do something like helicopter, yes, helicopter, no, and then lifeboat, yes, and lifeboat, no, lifeboat, yes, so yes, lifeboat, no. And then where do the numbers go? So where's this half going? Well, the half is going right at the very end. So those two together have to make a half, those two pathways, that's just a lifeboat irrespective of the helicopter. Those together make the half and the, um, and the helicopter, uh, sorry, the three fifths, sorry, it does go there, okay, because we know that uh, that we require a helicopter and the lifeboat and the helicopter is one fifth. So, is the one fifth there? No, the one fifth is here right at the very end, it's the helicopter and the lifeboat. What, what's that probability? Oops. Well, obviously we can work it out numerically by, by, doing, by doing the division and then we can start filling in the rest of the table, the rest of the tree diagram. And then of course, you know what I'm gonna ask them to do? Um, I'm going to ask them to flip it around and do the same tree diagram, but starting with the lifeboat. So do lifeboat, yes, lifeboat, no, and then helicopter, what's the same, what's different? Absolutely, Claire. So they really understand what they are doing. They really need to understand about mutually exclusive and exhaustive events and, and, what, and how all that works. That's why I think it tests their understanding. That's why I think it tests what is going on, not just kind of multiply fractions and add them together. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I use, I've used it before, I find them, you know, there's a lot of head scratching, there's a lot of this is really hard, that to me is, is good, that to me is productive struggle. Uh, and then there's kind of a few questions. If you give them these questions in advance, it does rather give the game away, neither a lifeboat nor a helicopter will be required, that it can't start off lifeboat, lifeboat yes, helicopter yes, it can, because it has to be an option of having neither of them. So that, so that might help them realise it's not as straightforward as the previous case. Okay, speaking of tree diagrams, uh, let's think about this situation. What's what's happening here? Playing game, um, you win, my draw, what about me winning? Well, so what happens? Well, let's kind of replay the game. Um, and uh, you win with probability 0.3, we draw probably 0.1, so I win probability presumably uh, 0.6, okay? But I might not win, we might draw. So what happens if we draw? Well, presumably if we draw, we, we, we play again. I, I, I actually, I realize it doesn't say that, but that's what I was thinking. So it's saying we play again. So you might win 0.3, I might be draw 0.1, might, I might win 0.6. And if I don't win, then, if, if, then, then uh, sorry, if we draw, if neither of us win, then we draw um, and we play again. So 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.6, etc. cetera. This kind of will carry on. So what's the probability that I win eventually? Well, I might win the probability that I win. Well, I might win on the first go, 0 0.6, or I might, we might draw and then I win, or we might draw twice and then I win, 
or we might draw three times and then I win, etc. So numerically, I've got 0 0.6 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.006 plus dot, 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 dot. That's looking a lot to me like 0 0.666 dot, 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 which looks to me like two thirds. So I think the problem that I win eventually is two thirds. Now, does that make sense? Yes, because if you think about the winning situations, not nine out of 10 times there's a winner, is roughly what we're thinking about, nine out of 10 times there's a winner. And of those nine times, six times it's me. So, the so if you look at the winning situations, 90% of the time there is a win, and of that 90% of the time, that uh, was within that 90% of the time, 6% of them are won by me. So it's six out of nine, i.e. two out of three. So the answer should be two thirds, and I get two thirds by, by the numerical calculation. Um, so let's do another example and see if we can again predict it and see if that's right. So same situation, you can see it's, 0.1 there, um, 0.3, uh, and sorry, and again 0.6. So let's 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 approach the same calculation in a different direction, in a different, different way. So, uh, so we've got same calculation. So p is 0 0.6 plus uh, plus 0 0.1 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.1 squared times 0 0.6 plus dot dot dot. Now what this reminds me of deliberately, what this reminds me of is infinite decimals, recurring decimals. So what am I going to do? Is I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. I'm slightly going to just gloss over the, the infinite aspect. I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. So 10p is 6 plus. Now what happens here? Well, that's going to become 0 0.6. That's going to become 0 0.1 times 6. The next one, which was 0 0.1 cubed, is going to become 0 0.1 squared times 0 0.6, etc. And so what have I got? I've got 10p is 6 and this, but that is just p. That's just p expressed again, repeated. So 0 0.10p is 6 plus p. So I multiply by 10, and essentially everything shifts uh, one, one place value column. So I get 6 and what I had before. So 6 plus p. So I get 9p is 6, and so I get p is 6 ninths, which is 2 thirds. So it looked numerically like the answer was two thirds. It made sense intuitively that the answer was two thirds. And then by, by adapting my, uh, my recurring decimals method, I can sort of get numerically that the answer is two thirds. What about if it's, it's a calculation is less nice? So what's gonna happen here? So here is 0 0.3, uh, now 0 0.5 for the draw, and so 0 0.2 for the win. So now the probability that I win is either I win on the first go or we draw and I win, or we draw and draw and I win, or we draw, draw, draw and I win, etc. So what am I going to do now? Well, the idea is to multiply by something so that I get a bit at the front and the same again. So what could I do? I can multiply by two this time round. I could double everything. So I'll get 2p is 0 0.4 plus one lot of 0 0.2. And then rather than being a quarter, this will be two quarters, which is a half of 0 0.2. And then th this will not be an eighth, it'll be two eighths, which is a quarter, i.e. 0.5 squared of 0 0.2, etc. So the same thing has happened. I've got my infinite p recurring again. So 2p is 0 0.4 plus the thing which I called p a moment ago. So 2p is 0 0.4 plus p. And so p must be 0 0.4, which is 2 fifths. Is that right? Yes, because of the winning occasions, which is 0.5 of the time, 0.2 of those are me. So 0.2 out of 0.5, which indeed is 2 fifths. So intuitively, the answer is two fifths. Numerically, the answer is two fifths. Uh, and that I think is a nice, nice tie together. Here's another example. Um, I'll just get it started. So P is, well, yeah, so um, it's 0.2. And now the drawing is 0.3. So either we, either I win on the first go, or we draw and I win, or we draw, draw and I win, 
etc. So the question now for, for the students is now what do you multiply both sides by? So what now is the right number so that you end up down here with some p is something plus p again, and then you can work out therefore what p is, knowing that we know what the answer is. So the thing about the tree diagram, if you know what the tree diagram looks like, uh, 0.2, 0.3, 0.5, the answer must be that of the 70% of times there's a winner, 50% of those are, are, are 50% within the 70% are me. So the answer must be five sevens. The answer has got to be five sevens because 70% of the time there is a winner, 50% of the time I am that winner. And so 50% out of 70% is five out of seven. So the answer must be five sevens. We know what we're heading for. Can we get there? And I really like this sort of probabilistic argument, which tells us the value of, some, of basically some infinite sums, some infinite geometric series, um, uh, which, which might be a bit, you know, I'm not suggesting you teach them about infinite GPs or infinite geometric progressions or, or, ge or geometric series, um, but uh, it's, it's nice to know. It's a good, it's a good setup for the A-level study uh, next in the following year, in year 12. Okay. So doing quite a lot of, sort of calculation stuff, and obviously you have the slides to look back over and, and, and kind of redo the calculations, you know, particularly the, 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 you know, the moving the fractions, the flipping the fractions, flipping the tree diagram, you know, working out what, what goes where. Um, and you're right, I mean, Claire, they do have to understand geometric sequences, so this is not totally random. They don't, they don't have to do geometric sums, but I think it's quite nice to show them how to do a geometric sum and to make that connection with the, recur with the recurring decimals. My last sort of four slides are, I just said, so I want to think about testing their understanding of probability. Um, so I would use a question like this, say. Um, I'm, as, I'm interested to know what, what you think, and uh, not, not so much what you think, sorry, but perhaps what you think your students would think in, the, in this situation. I mean, I'm going to tell me what you think, but I'm obviously, you know, I'm, the, 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 the mistakes that the students make are, are, you know, are, are, are quite startling. What do you think your students would say about, you know, would they say reasonable, unreasonable, reasonable, reasonable, unreasonable, unreasonable, other way around. Um, so I'm interested to know what, what, what you think, they, how you think they might respond to this. And this is what I mean by trying to assess and test and, and, and probe, a stress test, if you like, their conceptual understanding. What do you think might come to the surface? Well, that, Amy, seems obvious to us, <laughs> but try it with your students and see what happens. <laughs> so yes. Um, but that's not, so, so you know, so exactly, Helen. Um, sorry, exactly, Amy, that is, that is, that, that is, no, no, that, 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 but, but try it with your students. So, so, so a, Amy is having that sort of, I, I'm, I'm, am I missing something here? No, you're not missing the point. So I would say, as I'm sure you would say, the first one's daft. I mean, you know, unless I'm very, very, very unobservant as a teacher, I know whether Robert's got brown hair or not. So it'd be ludicrous to start talking about probability. You know, there, there is no probability about it. He does or he doesn't. Um, what the students will sort of say is that it's absolutely, this is absolutely fine um, because, you know, it, it, that, you know, half do and half don't. So it's, it, it's, it's like 10 out of 20, three out of six, 15 out of 30. What they, what they pick up um, from their first expo exposure probability is that probability is about counting. They get very, it seems to me, they get very fixated on the idea that when you're asking a probability question, you're really asking a counting question. So I think what you will uncover is that really they think probability is about counting. And so they say the first one's fine and the second one's not, because the first one you can count the number of people in the class and half of them have got brown hair and half of them haven't, so it's half. And then the second one you can't count because you don't know what's gonna happen in the future in November. And you don't, you don't know, you can't count the number of rainy days in the future. And that is absolutely the wrong way around. That's absolutely missing the point. Let me see what's coming in the chat. 
Yeah, exactly fair. So, so the, 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 they've completely, I, I see what you mean. They've got it completely wrong around. By the way, that comment from Claire in the chat is a really good comment to bear in mind early with those questions about tea, tea and porridge to porridge. Which way around is it? Is it you've got the beverage, i.e. the cup of tea, and now you're choosing, now you're going to choose the, 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 the food stuff, the, 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 the snack, or is it the other way around? Have you got the bowl of snack in front of you, porridge, and then you're going to the beverage counter to, cho to, to choose the drink? So it's really good to un understand uh, that way around. Um, yeah, exactly. So distinguishing between those two. What I find helps is to get, get away from this idea of chance or likelihood or kind of mysterious and all that. And I talk very much about that about kind of knowledge, about information, about belief. And really, how I talk about probability is probability is probability is not in the world probabilities in my head. So, so, so when, I, when I say, um, you know, when I toss a coin, when I flick a coin, there is a probability of a half, and I get head. Where is the probability of a half? It's not in the coin. It's not in the world. It's not on the table. It's not in my thumb as I flick the coin. It's in my head. So probability is, is, a, is a measure of how how, how I feel, how I believe, what I know about things that could happen. So a way of thinking about it then is that something which is, which I'm going to call probability zero, which I'm going to assign probability zero, I would be very startled if that thing happened. Something which I'm going to give a probability of one is I'm very unsurprised that that thing happens. So and something, something with a high probability, like the sun will rise tomorrow, something, something I give a high probability to, I'm really not very surprised when I wake up tomorrow and the sun has risen. Something I'd be very surprised by, like, you know, I open an envelope and a million pounds inside it, I give that a low probability to reflect the fact that I'd be utterly flabbergasted if that actually happened. So I, I would try and take probability away from this idea of that chance, about mystery, it's about likelihood. It's about my belief, my knowledge, my information. So in the first case, I've got all the information I need. I teach this class, I teach this child, I know whether this child's got brown hair. This is not a probability situation because there is no surprise in this. Okay, I know what the color is of, of Robert's hair is. There is no surprise whatsoever. Whereas this one, now, where the half comes from, I, see, I just saw somebody Claire talk about, about, about kind of, kind of re relative frequency. Um, so, uh, so where the half comes from might be from prior experience, but you know, when I wake up on my birthday in November, how surprised am I that it's raining? Well, half the days last year were wet, so the fact that it's raining today is not that surprising. I could have expected it, so I'm kind of where I was last year, but where I am this year is where I was last year. So I'm kind of in the middle, because I'm neither utterly startled that it's raining, nor am I completely unsurprised that it's raining, because last year, about half the time it was raining, about half the time it wasn't. So yeah, I draw, so you're right, Claire, I use the relative frequency to, to change my belief, to inform my knowledge, my, as I say, my, my surprise about what's happening. And there's something like this. So what's the same, what's different? Well, it's all the same numbers, obviously, but a bit of a cut and paste here, all the same numbers. Uh, what do we think about these? Uh, agree, challenge, and, and again, not so much what do you think about these, but what do you think your students would say about these? Uh, what if they respond differently, if they agree with some and challenge with others, or if they're happy with some, I mean, maybe agree or challenge is not quite the right phrase, maybe it should be, you know, smiley face, sad face, you know, th thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, what, what, why, why is it different? Why does it, why does it make a difference? Um, so what sort of, and again, I'm trying to draw out their conceptual understanding of what we mean by probability. And if you think about it as this spectrum of knowledge, that this, this measure of knowledge from, Sort of, sort of, sort of, sort of, sort of, OMG to yeah, whatever. So kind of very blasé to utterly start startled. Really internalized prob probability, probabilities in my head. The number, the decimal represents my knowledge, my experience, my belief. It doesn't exist in the real world. It's not out there waiting for me to be found. It's not like, you know, it's not like the tomb of Tutankhamun waiting to be uncovered. Any thoughts about these uh, sort of, uh, uh, any suggestions? I, mean, 
either what you think about them or, or just what you think your students might do. Yeah, um, um, I mean, I, I was going to say, Amy, I didn't like it either, but obviously I do like it because I wrote it. <laughs> so I love it, really. But, but I mean, Amy, do you want to unpack why you don't like it? So, yeah, the fact they don't add up to one. Yeah, exactly. So, so we want the students to say they don't add up to one, but why does that matter? We'll come back to this idea about knowledge. Okay, so I don't know anything about tomorrow, but I do know it's either going to be raining or it's, uh, you know, or, or either it'll rain at some point or to be dry all day. You know, that, that, those are the only options. If I got to the end of the day and something else had happened, that would be mind-blowingly startling. You know, the sky had disappeared halfway through the day. So I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty certain, I'm pretty confident that tomorrow one of those things will happen. Therefore, there's no room for anything else. Therefore, they've got to add up to one. So you're right, they've got to add up to one, but make sure your students can tell you why they have to add up to one. And again, I think that's where this kind of picture comes in of, of knowledge. All I know is that, that those two have got, one of those two has got to happen. So, so I'm right there at that end. Oh, snow, snow is just chunky rain, Doug. <laughs> but good point though, fair point, accept that. Chun chunky rain. Okay, um, second one, you know, I want to try and think about, well, hang on, surely torrential rain, surely there can't be torrential rain without rain. So I want to try and think about the, the relationship between those two. So why is the third one okay? Why is the third one all right? What's the same? What's different between the first between the first one and the third one? Well, it, you know, again, it comes back to this idea about about about, 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 my, about my belief. So, um, you know, I, you know, it might rain tomorrow. I might do my maths homework. I, I can't. I can't. Yeah, that there's there's room for other things. So other things could happen. So so my, so where I am, I'm I'm not I'm not certain. I'm not unsurprised that either that or that and nothing else will happen. I'm kind of you know I'm I'm, I'm here and there's, there's there's room for other things to take place because they're unrelated exactly. Think about that they're, they're, they're lacking relationship. And I think getting your students to articulate that and 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 move away from oh it's counting it's something over something. Uh, is really important. Um, so just a couple more for you to, you to think about. So again, here got situation, putting probabilities in order, in, in, in order of size. So, you know, he got a lot of information there about half the class left-handers, um, half the class are right-handers, pretty unlikely. But anyway, um, and of the left-handers, left-handers like maths, like me, left-hander mathematician, yay. And uh, right-handers don't like maths, boo, boo, boo to right-handers, sorry, probably most of you are right-handers. Um, uh, so, uh, in this situation, you know, what, what can you work out? Which one, again, which, which of these three events would you, would you be most surprised by? Which of these three events would you be least surprised by? And then put them in order. Um, and then lastly, some, something similar. So same kind of idea. I've got bags. Which of these three events, which of these three outcomes, which of these, which of these three results would you be most surprised by? So your surprise is increasing in that direction. Your surprise is increasing in that direction. And, it, and, and I like, you know, I talk about surprise, talk about belief, because it gets it away from this kind of idea of, 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 ch of, um, of chance, of likelihood, of, of something out there. Probability is not in the world, probability is in my head. And we can have different probabilities because we have different heads, we have different information, we have different knowledge. So I hope I've, I've, I've illustrated these examples. I mean, I've, I've used some of these prompts directly. Uh, I think particularly that's the one towards the end. You know, give, give me another, give me another reason why those, like, why that statement doesn't make sense. Give me another example of, of incompatible probabilities. Give me another representation. We've done that, we've done that direct, haven't we? T take the tree diagram, turn it into a two-way table, turn the two-way table into another tree diagram. So I, th I think probability is a really good context for, for some of these activities. Um, and of course, make up your own, you know, make up your own set of statements like that. Make up your own set of statements like that. You know, think there's so much opportunity for them to generate and in the process of them doing so, for you to assess their understanding, not just their fluency. I should pause there. Really happy to take questions. Um, I'm really happy to uh, just chat to anyone who, who, who wants, who's got some further um, uh, comments to make. Uh, if, you, if you object to anything I've said, I mean, this, you know, this last point is, is, 
it's quite subjective. This, this is how I teach probability. It's not it's not standard. <laughs> it's not canonical. Um, it works. It works for me. I'm happy to to um, explain it, defend it if, if needs be. Otherwise, thank you so much for time. Um, uh, I'll get the slides out to you. There'll be the video with a hideous bit in the middle where I get my where I get my calculation wrong. Uh, there I am, committed forever to posterity. You never escape it on the internet. Um, if not, I will see you next week for quadratics, quadratic expressions, back to algebra in a week's time. So, bye for now. Um, yeah, very, very happy to say, Amy. Thanks as always for your contributions. Thanks for your suggestions. Uh, so, I'll stop the recording now.